Hey, sports better. Yes, you. Guess what? Your favorite sports book, BetUS.com, is back for its 28th year of NFL action. So, here's what you got to do. Just click the link below in my description box and sign up today. BetUS.com, where the game begins. Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Out of My League. I'm Nick Diaz. So, it's time to buy, sell, or hold after the Saints' second preseason game. We'll either buy, we'll either sell, or we'll either hold on stock of every player after every Saints game and every LSU game this season. So, starting with Ian Book. Sell. I'm going to say this for the rest of the preseason. I'm going to keep on saying it. Somehow, Brian Kelly turned Ian Book into the winningest quarterback in the history of Notre Dame football. Moving on, let's get to the first round draft picks. Trevor Penning. Last week, I held. This week, I'm buying. There's some great scouting reports on Trevor Penning by NFL analysts and writers all across social media that I've been watching. Uh, And in one week, Trevor Penning has already greatly improved on his pass protection. Still needs a little bit of work, but there have already been massive improvements. And he did that against better competition than the Texans. And he did it for a longer stretch of game time where he actually started. Now, not saying the Packers' starting defense was out there, but still a better roster overall. And Penning is showing that he improves little by little each and every week. That's a sign that you hit on another draft pick. Now, Chris Olave, your first draft pick, buy, just like last week, buy stock. Week before in practice reports, he was great. This week in joint practices versus one of the best secondaries in football, the Green Bay Packers. And then, of course, he scores his first touchdown from Ian Book, of all people. Looks like the Saints have hit on both of their first round picks this time around, which they haven't in recent years. So let's get to running backs. Now, I've been a big guy on who's going to be the third running back, but now I'm not really I'm not really uh, worried about that anymore because it's a very realistic possibility that Alvin Kamara will not be suspended this season. When Adam Schefter tweets that out, that's when you know I trust it. But let's look at Tony Jones Jr., for example. He started because Dwayne Washington did not play with an uh, undisclosed injury. With Tony Jones Jr., this week, I'm buying. Tony Jones Jr. made the most of what the opportunity that he had, even though Dwayne Washington, who was the starter last week, did not play. And seeing as there's less room for running backs to be added onto the roster or kept on because Alvin Kamara looks like he's going to play, that's even a bigger move for Tony Jones Jr. to make the best of himself to make this roster. Consistency is going to keep him as the potential third running back on this team, and he made his case last week. Dwayne Washington, I'll hold. He started last week. He scored a touchdown on the opening drive of the preseason. So I can't really say he did anything bad because he didn't play. So I can't knock him for it, but I'll hold. But as of right now, considering what Tony Jones Jr. did last year, considering what Tony Jones Jr. has done every offseason, preseason, and this preseason, and specifically Saturday, I'll hold, but it's not looking good for Dwayne Washington today. And the last running back, Abram Smith, I'll hold once again. Uh, He didn't really do anything to change my mind like he did last week. But Zigbo has been released by the Saints and picked up by the Broncos. That's another running back. So this means that Smith still has a very clear chance to at least make the practice squad, which I think he will. I think they love his toughness, and I think they love his athleticism. I just think he needs, needs to stay on the practice squad to get more comfortable at the running back position, which is a position that he has not played for very long. I think they see some potential in him, similar to what they saw with Tony Jones Jr., who was on the practice squad his first year with the team, uh, but I'll hold as of right now. Now let's get to some veterans. Cesar Ruiz. I'm buying. Third year for Cesar Ruiz, and he's starting to look like the guy that he did coming out of Michigan. He's a natural center playing guard. I get it. Plus you add COVID, plus you add injuries. He's a, his career has been sort of a slow start with flashes uh, here and there. But he's been showing those flashes in practice and in the preseason way more consistently. And the flashes are getting bigger and bigger. I'm buying stock in Ruiz to finally pop in year number three. Taysom Hill, the tight end. Buying. 
I've been on the Taysom Hill tight end bandwagon for a few years now. I think it's his natural position. Now, he only had one catch for 10 yards, but you can just tell it's finally, you know, coming to him a little bit. His blocking is getting a little bit better. Uh, he's making, a, you know, a few more plays in practice uh, now that he's finally getting healthy. Look, Adam Troutman's going to be your starter, but buy stock and Taysom Hill as the tight end. And then lastly, Will Lutz. Buy. Obviously, you're going to buy Stock and Will Lutz, but like other Saints players coming off of injuries, how are they going to bounce back at the beginning of the season? Considering Will Lutz did have a very serious injury that you know can affect how you are as a kicker. Well, Will Lutz hits a 59-yard field goal on Saturday against the Green Bay Packers, right down the middle. Big Nuts Lutz is back. Buy Stock. He's not going to have too much rust to shake off. And that's all I have for my grades for each player for buy, sell, or hold. But let me say this. There's still a lot of fans asking, what is still the point of playing these preseason games? I mean, isn't Chris Olave dominating in practice? Isn't he dominating in joint practices against the Packers? Isn't Trevor Penning mauling people every day? Can't you tell Ian Book has a shitty arm in walkthroughs, much less scrimmages? And to all of that, I say, yes, you can tell. You can tell all of those things in practice. But I've never been a part of the groupthink mob of fans on Twitter saying, well, preseason games are pointless. Get rid of them. Well, for you, the fan, and for you, the media member, it is. Because the star players aren't playing outside of, you know, rookies who are first-round picks. But, you know, even then, some of them don't play. But the coaches, you have to get down to a 53-man roster plus practice squad guys, there are things in practice that you just can't do. And at the end of the day, you have to play a real football game, exhibition or not, a real live contact football game to ultimately find out and make a full evaluation. You have to see how they react in game situations. When they make mistakes, uh, do they get frustrated or do they move on? Uh, How do they handle playing against another team instead of a scripted scrimmage every day against the same guy every single rep or every other rep? Uh, Where you likely, you know, know what the play is going to be before they run it. And if you make a mistake, they're not going to stop practice and reset everything. No, you got to keep going. Uh, Are you nervous with more fans watching, the bright lights, a larger camera crew, all that stuff? Look, you can't find that out in practice no matter how hard you try. And uh, sometimes, some guys just aren't practice guys. That's a real thing. That's a real thing that is a problem for a lot of coaches, and you need to play the game of football just to find out. So, as of right now, do they need three preseason games? Maybe not. I think three is pretty good but maybe they bump it down to two. Either way, there are things that you need to find out in preseason games, and I do think there is truth to preseason games if you're looking for the right stuff. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok in the description link below.